Hi, this is Jeff Foster for Sonic Fire Pro 5. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you using Sonic Fire Pro 5 to create a soundtrack for a really quick TV show opener or bumper in After Effects CS5. And in this case, I've got a lot of still images that I've converted to 3D layers, and I've got them all in motion. Uh, it's creating all of these motion graphics. Now I need to spread out some of these uh, elements. I've got this one here that it resolves on, but I've got all of these other 3D layers that are all animating in. I want to spread them along the timeline, kind of following the cue of the music itself. And this is something I typically do when I'm creating motion graphics. I like to follow the music and let the music guide where the elements are going to fall into place. Even though I've got the animation set, I can move them along the timeline. I do know that I need a good four or five seconds here at the end where there's some resolve where the title can come on and that can all kind of fade out the end here. So I do need some impact somewhere around the seven or eight second point here. And that is my only guideline while I'm building this project. So let's go over to Sonic Fire Pro 5. Now I've already selected a piece of music that I think will work really well for this project. Just back this up and play a little clip. Now it has a lot of energy, a little bit of angst in it because it's kind of a, a battle type of a, a program here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my 13 second clip here. Now I can see whether or not this is going to work for me just right out of the can here. So let me play this. Now that could work if I really had something that needed to resolve right toward the end here. But I need something that resolves somewhere around the eight second mark or so. So I could come in here and actually rebuild this whole thing using the building blocks right out of the bin. I can come down to the bin and this is where all of the blocks are that uh, are in this particular library. Now I've got these here that I really like, Shocked. If I double click them, I can hear each block. And that's just one little uh, section of the music. If I select all of the Shocked blocks, it will go through and play all of them for me. Now, I really like that. It's a little more musical. It's got the uh, energy that I'm looking for because I don't need to really you know, hit people over the head or they'll be hitting the mute button. Now, if you're used to using GarageBand and building things along timeline using little capsules or blocks, then this will feel really familiar to you. So I'm going to take these four that I've selected and just go drag them up here to the timeline. And notice that it creates a new track for me. So I'll just go up here and mute the first track. And now I've got those first four built there. Well, I want something to hit right about here. Well, this is right about the seven second mark. So that's pretty much where I want something to happen that's going to give me a resolve. Well, there's uh, some down here called Frazzled. Let me select those. Okay, now I, I really like that, but it has a little bit too much of a build. So let me see if I can just use these two here. Notice that they've got these little green tabs on them here. That means that that can stand alone as something that will start a segment or blend into another segment. Uh, as Shocked ends, it ends on its own. Well, these two here stand on their own as both a beginning and an ending as well. Frazzled 2 and Frazzled 3 fade. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I want something that's going to hit and then fade out. So let me drag those up here. Okay, now that's going to really work well for me. Now, here's something that I hadn't discovered until after I actually built this file the first time. But this is something new and unique to Sonic Fire Pro 5. And that is, if I take this original I'll mute this one. I'll unmute my original track up here. And I can just select it and come over here to timing control. Now, if I change this from spasm to, say, shocked, which is what I really wanted to show up here, 
Well, look what it does here for me. It plays all four of those shocked pieces, and then it throws frazzled in there. And it did that all by itself. I didn't tell it to do that. That's just what it did. So it basically created for me in just one click what I just spent the last two minutes trying to build myself with the, with the building blocks. However, the building blocks do come in handy if you go through and you start playing with this and you're still not getting what you need. That is another method of building this. But this did it for me automatically just with a click of one button, which I think is phenomenal. So I'm going to play that and make sure it's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, and that's that's fantastic. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I can export this as an AIF file. We'll just come out here, export soundtrack video, please soundtrack, export, and I'll save it to my project file. That exports really quickly. Now I'll go back to After Effects. I'll import in that file. And now I can add that to my timeline. Now, if I can do a RAM preview and get the whole 13 seconds in it, then I'll be able to really see where along the timeline I can start moving all of my elements. Okay, so it looks like I've got the timing pretty close on this element right here. We're going to leave that right where it is. And that animates in, as do all of the other elements. Now, with the beat of the music, I think in this case, I might just be able to evenly space all of these others out here. So there's only two more things I want to add to this before I think that I'm done. Uh, I want a little more of like an explosion. This is a title that has a lot of anxiety that is called Bride Wars. So I want some explosions going on in there. And so I use some hits to kind of dramatize what I'm doing. Well, what I can do is go back to Sonic Fire Pro, get a new file, and uh, I can click Add Hit File. Okay, that's not exactly what I had in mind. I want something that's more like an explosion. So I can come over here to the Properties and choose Heavy Hits. Okay, well that underneath the music would work really well, and I, I may use that. I also want to kind of shake the uh, text and the imagery up a little bit too. Uh, let's try another one here. So that would work really well with that transition of the music. So I'm going to use both of those, and I've already done that in the project here, so we won't take time with the importing and exporting. I've got one here that I've already put all of the pieces in together. I've got the swell hit going on at this point as we'll see down here in the timeline and then I've got the other hit coming in here after the text kind of shakes a little bit in here so I've got the whole thing already done in a QuickTime movie let me play that for you So you can see that right in these areas here where I've got, uh, I've put markers in there, I've got the swell hit coming in and hitting. We can go down here and look at the waveforms. There's the waveform. And that's one way you can visually kind of cue where things are happening. That's where the music changes right in here. I've got that matching the waveform of the music, which I can twirl down here. So you can see the swell and the waveform and the music right in this point. So I've got that kind of accentuating what's going on with the music. Then I've got this other hit here, the deep hit. Look at the waveform there. That comes in right about here. That shakes up the text here, the title, and the imagery in the middle. So that's an example of using Sonic Fire Pro 5 along with After Effects CS5 to create a really quick workflow making a show opener or a bumper for a TV series. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. This is Jeff Foster for Sonic Fire Pro 5.